All right, starting on the post lab uh, calculations for temperature of a Bunsen burner. Uh, now looking at this one, number one, it says calculate the change in temperature of the water. Okay, anytime we do change in anything, which that means delta T, uh, we need to go our temperature final minus our temperature initial. So our final temperature of the water, we're solving for delta T, final temperature is going to be 28.1 minus our initial temperature, and that's degrees Celsius, is 22.8. And we get a change in temperature of right around 5.3 degrees Celsius. Hey guys, moving on to number two. Now number two, uh, it says, what is the mass of the water that was heated by the metal object? Uh, we don't have the mass of the water, but we do. what we do have is we have the mass of the cup and we have the mass of the cup and the water. So to get the, just the mass of the water, what we're going to do is take our mass of the cup and water, which is 146.62, subtract out the mass of the cup, and get the mass of just the water, which is 137.71 grams. All right, guys, moving on to number three. It says use the heat formula to calculate the heat gained by the water. So anytime we're searching for heat, or in that case energy, we're always going to use the equation Q equals MC delta T. Okay. Now, what we need to solve for is we need to solve for Q. So we need mass, we need specific heat, and we need change in temperature. Well, number one and number two, we calculated change in temperature and mass. Okay, the only thing we need now is a specific heat. So if it doesn't give it to us, we just go look it up in a book. And we look it up in the book and we see that the specific heat of water is going to be 4.18. So we take our mass, which our mass is going to be 137.71 grams, which we get up from right here. We multiply it by the specific heat that we just looked up in a chart, which is specific heat is 4.18 joules per gram degrees Celsius times the uh, change in temperature which we calculated that up here as well which is 5.3 degrees Celsius okay we multiply all these together and we will get our Q which is our energy in this which is 3000 right around 3100 joules Now, moving on to number four. In number four, it says calculate the temperature of the hot metal. And remember that the heat gained by the water must equal the heat lost by the metal object. So when we're working this one out, what we have to do is we have to realize that it wants us to calculate the temperature of the hot metal object. Okay? And that's obviously the metal object after we've heated it up. So it's going to be our final temperature. Okay, so what we need is we're solving for final temperature and we're using the equation Q equals MC delta T. And we know that delta T means change in or Q equals MC temperature final minus temperature initial. Okay, now we're solving for our temperature final so therefore algebraically what we'll end up doing is divide both sides by MC to get our equation Q all over MC equals temperature final minus temperature initial, which we solve for our final temperature by saying adding TI or temperature initial to both sides. So we get our temperature initial plus Q all over MC equals our temperature final. And this is the equation that we are going to be using in number four calculations. So now that we have our equation, we can go ahead and start plugging in our variables. Now when we're looking at this, the one thing it says is remember that the heat gained by the water must equal the heat lost by the metal object. So this Q that we found for in number three is the same Q that we're going to be using in number four because this is the amount of uh, energy that was absorbed by the water, so it's going to be the same amount of energy that was released by the hot metal object. So when we're plugging this into our equation, um, the only other thing that we don't have is we have the mass of the metal object, which comes from right here, and we have the specific heat of the, the metal, which was iron, which is right there, is our initial temperature. OK, 
Okay, so we need the initial temperature so that we can find for final temperature. Now, in this problem, we're going to use our final temperature of the water as our initial temperature of the metal. Okay, the reason why we're doing this is because when we put the hot object into the water, it gave an intermediate state. And that intermediate state we're going to use as our initial temperature of the metal. So what we're going to have is we're going to have 28.1 degrees Celsius plus, and we're going to put this in parentheses, our Q, which is 3,100 joules, all divided by our mass of the metal object, which is... 9.45 grams times the specific heat which is 0 0.449 and that would be joules grams Celsius okay and we got that the mass from up here and the specific heat from up here as well okay so now we have everything plugged into our equation all we have to do is just work it out and make sure that we multiply 9.45 times 0 0.449 first then we divide 3,100 divided by that answer and then very lastly we add our 28.1 degrees Celsius and when we do that we get an answer of 758.1 degrees Celsius and that's going to be the temperature of the Bunsen burner as well because that's the temperature that was raised when the metal was sitting in there.